Hi, I'm Nikki with Nana's Quilt Cottage here in Old Colorado City in Colorado Springs. I'm demoing today how to do thread painting on our 2016 row by row. Right now we're going to start with the gray. I'm going to do thread painting, which basically means I'm going to use my thread like a pencil or a pen to accent my camper and do my trees. I'm going to start with the camper first. I've already fused these down using Steema Seam Light 2 onto my background of log cabins. Also, before I start stitching, I added some interfacing on the back. SF101 is what I put on the back of this just to give it stability. So as I put all this dense thread in there, it doesn't start to crinkle and pull up. So I've got my signature 50 weight gray variegated thread loaded in my machine. I'm gonna put on an open toe embroidery foot onto my machine. Okay, so I've got an open toe embroidery foot is what I'm using. That way I can see my work. Okay. All right, so I'm using my open toe embroidery foot. If you want to see what that looks like, it has an open space in it so that way I can see where I'm stitching. I put that on my machine. Every machine has an open toe embroidery foot no matter what kind of machine you use. So with, with this process, I'm doing raw edge applique. I'm going to sew as close to the edge as possible without falling off. So I'm going to go ahead and put my needle down and I'm going to lift up my bobbin thread from the back. I do have my feed dogs are up. I'm using my feed dogs. They're going to drive. Neat thing is I'm using the Viking Opal 690Q to do this project and what it will do as long as I have my needle set in a down position as I sew every time I stop the presser foot will raise itself an eighth of an inch so I can pivot without losing um, my fabric moving around on me. So what I'm going to do is going to sew as close to the edge as possible all the way around my project. And you'll see I'll stop and it lifts up my presser foot leaving the needle down so I can go around. I'm going to go ahead and stick my extra thread here so he's out of the way and not in the way when I get around here. So I'm just going to keep going around him, close to the edge without falling off, using a variegated thread so sometimes you can see it really well and sometimes you can't see it so well and that's okay. Because you know what, I don't always sew straight so I don't want you to see everything I sew. I'm using it about a 2.5 stitch length on here to make a nice stitch. I'm going to keep going. Now when I get around to the door, I like to sew as much as I can without cutting threads and moving around. So I'm going to go around the bottom of the door, stop at the edge of my door, and go ahead and head up. So I'm going to go ahead and go and head, up, head up my door. As I'm sewing around, I'm thinking, hmm, is this a screen door or is this a regular door? Because maybe I want it to be a screen door. And if I want it to be a screen door, then I need to make a division in my door. This isn't my row, so I have to think about the person who made it if they want a screen door. So I've came around once, but I look at it and I go, it really doesn't show up that well. Let's go around again. So if you go around again, here's where I'm kind of getting more into my thread painting because I'm going to use this to make a darker accent on my project. So I'm going to go ahead and go around again on my door. Just get an extra layer of stitching on here. Go all the way around. Set the machine so it stops the needle down. It would be very helpful. There we go. Now it'll always do that. So I'll go back down. And if I don't sew it exactly the same, that's okay. It kind of adds to the whimsy of this if I don't sew exactly on top of everything like I did before. So now I've went around my door two times. I'm pretty happy with that. I like the look of it. So I'm going to come in here. Now it's time to do my tire. So I have to decide how I want to do my tire. Do I want to have tread on my tire? Do I want to have my tire just flat? It doesn't matter. But you know, I'm kind of sitting here thinking, thinking, hmm, maybe tread would be kind of cool. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to rotate my piece and I'm going to switch and I'm going to do a zigzag. The nice thing is, is if I change my mind later on and say, man, that didn't look good at all, I can just rip it out. Nobody's going to care. It's my project. So I'm going to go ahead and do a zigzag around my tire, and it's going to look like tread. 
I just keep stopping. And it's not supposed to be perfect. Now, if you're looking at your pattern going, wait, she didn't put tread on hers. No, nope, I didn't. Because it kind of like, I always say, the pattern talks to me when I start sewing on it. And so I just thought, thought wouldn't that be cool with tread? So you can kind of play around with it and do whatever you want on your tire. Okay, go ahead and pause. So now I finished my tire. I've done my tread around the outside of my tire and my spokes inside of my tire. Now it's time to do the window with the gray thread. So I'm going to sew around and then I'm going to sew around it one more time and come back in and do a cross in the center to give my window panes inside. Pause. Okay, hey, we've finished the window, so now it's on to the pennants. It's time to go around the pennants. I went ahead and peeled off the paper, layered them out where I like them, and ironed them on so now they're permanent. So they're all laid across here, and now we're going to sew around each one, again, using the thread to be the focus point, like I'm using a pencil. So the thread's going to become my string that hangs my pennant, and then it's also going to become the thing that holds the pennant down. So I'm going to start with the first one, and how I'm going to do that is I'm going to start at the edge of my camper. I'm going to start sewing at the edge of my camper with my thread and I'm just going to sew on. It's going to tie off when it starts. I'm going to sew on and I'm sewing it close to the edge of my pennant without falling off. And I'm going to go around the little triangle here, I'm trying to keep this flat so you can see it. Can you girls see? Okay. And then keep going around. Now, kind of after I've went around the pin at once, I feel that's pretty good, but the top of it I'm going to go a couple times because I want it to really look like a string mm -hmm. holding all those pieces. So I'm going to go over it a couple times. So a fast way to do this instead of rotating it so much is just hitting the back stitch button. Because right now, I have now went over that piece four times. Because I first went around it one time, then I, bet I stitched around again, and I went back up and forward. So now I'm on to my next one. Just right at the edge of him, and I'm going to stitch around him, all the way around, rotate him around, and then I'm back up at the top, same thing again, I'm just going to use my back stitch button, I'll go forward and back, making sure I go back far enough that I connect up with its friend. So they all have it. So I'm going to continue all the way around until I get all six of my pennants sewn down in the same manner. Okay, so now I've got my tree made and now it's time to do the branches. I've got all my gnarlies on my tree that makes it look that way. Now this thread is pretty light that I chose on this tree. I think on future trees I might go to a darker gray thread so I can see it better. But we're going to start out with our branch. And if you think about a branch, I'm just going to sew straight out. Oh, I lost my thing. I'm going to sew straight out. And then I'm going to stop and I'm going to turn. Branches grow up, they don't go down. This is a live tree, not a dead tree. I'm a little angle about that. So when I get out there on that branch, I sew as far forward as I want to, and then I just back stitch back to the main part of my branch. And then I'm going to go out some more and back stitch back to the main part. Sometimes I get in a rut though and I get my trees all have three fingers and like my branches all have three fingers. I'm like, okay, now I gotta fix that. Can't all have three fingers. So then I'll go ahead and start back stitching back to my main trunk. And then I'll stop and make him a little branch. So just so he doesn't look funny. So I'm back stitching back out to the trunk. Now normally I would just travel right back on up. Oh, I'm going to thicken out that branch because when I came back down I didn't quite get all on top of my other stitching very well. So I just want to go ahead and thicken that out. I'm going to cut this off so you can see up close what I just did. Okay? That's what I did. See that? So I'm going to continue doing that all around. So I'm going to have thicker ones here at the bottom and they'll be a little thinner at the top. And I even made my aspen because if you look at aspens they grow straight up too, right? They grow little branches right out the top of them. So I'm going to make a little branch or two out of the top. Okay? Alright, so now it's time to put my leaves on my aspen. I've cut out all my appliques and the leftover fabrics in my kit. I'm going to take each one of those and I'm going to put some of my heat and bond, my, excuse me, my steam seam 2 light on the back of them. 
and then I'm going to peel that off. So after I fuse that on, now what's going to happen when I peel that off is they're just going to be tacky. They're a little bit tacky here. I'm going to do that with all my pieces. Then I'm going to cut what I call logs. I'm going to cut with the pieces of fabric, about the width of my finger, off of here. So you're not going to be cutting out all these teeny tiny little leaves. We're going to just do this kind of haphazard and having fun. So there's those. There's some yellow. Use the other side of my scrap. I'm going to cut this one long and then cut him in the little logs. See, I'm cutting it like this, the width of my finger, roughly. No science here. After I do that, I'm going to go back and just go triangles. Helter, skelter, back, forth, all the way down. They're sticking to my scissors because they're a little tacky. But that's going to actually make these trees so much easier when I start putting them together. So let me cut a little bit of yellow here so you can see what that looks like. So back, forth, back and forth. I'm getting those pieces off. Keep going back and forth. It doesn't matter. Even if I cut a rectangle, it's okay. Because you're giving the impression of leaves. We're not cutting leaves. So now I have, I've got my, my pieces all cut apart and laid out one one. And because I use Steam Seam Light 2, my pieces aren't even ironed down yet. Because that light tacky, they're holding. So even if I walk away for a few minutes and the cat runs across, my pieces are still going to be in place. But I've got them where I like them. I've got the nice shape of my tree. Now I'm going to go ahead and make it permanent by using my iron and making them hang out there. So I iron them down. Now it's time to change out the thread in your machine and go ahead and put on your free motion foot or darning foot is what some machines call them and your yellow to orangey variegated thread. So now I've got them all fused down. I've got my free motion or darning foot on. My feed dogs are dropped. And I've got the right color threaded that I want to have. I've got a matching bobbin down below. And so what I'm going to first do is I'm going to bring up that bobbin thread. I'm going to put a needle down, needle up. He's down there and he's not kind of, oh, I actually don't have a matching one, I have a gray one. Let's hope that my tension's perfect, but I'm pretty sure this machine's almost 99% of the time spot on. So I'm going to bring him up. The reason why I'm bringing him up is because I don't want him to make a nasty mess on the back. And I'm not starting any specific spot, I'm kind of just starting in the middle. Because, you know, like anything, you know, when you first start out, you kind of have a little rusty and you kind of got to get going, get your groove on. So, I'm just going to kind of start right here. Put my needle down on my piece, meander stitch, and just make sure I drive through every single one of my triangles. So I'm just meandering around. Because I'm using the yellow, I'm giving more color to my piece as well. I'm just going through and grabbing all the ones and doing a nice little fun meander stitch all over making sure I catch every triangle at least one time. If I catch it twice, that's fine. Think swirly, think, you know, the wind blowing through your trees. That's your goal. And now you have completed an aspen.